Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Today, we are going to see how to identify ups and downs in profession, how to know when will you have growth or different questions related to profession, like, for example, how to know where you will find uh, challenges, what kind of problems that you can encounter, because career in itself is a very big topic these days. So therefore, it's not any more uh, a simplistic job of any astrologer to say, oh, sun is in 10th house, you will be a government officer or uh, Venus is in 10th house, you will be into uh, filmmaking or Mercury, Venus is in 10th, so you will be a film star or Jupiter is in 10th, you will be a accountant. So gone are those days where... We could just see an individual uh, planet and an individual house like the 10th house and we can uh, predict about a person. But in general, there are certain principles which will always hold true. And that's exactly what we are going to discuss today. So for example, uh, we know that the 10th house has four Karakas. So the first Karaka, the most important, most prominent of all them, all of them is none other than Mercury. So the problem is people, they ignore Mercury, they neglect Mercury. Whenever it comes to the 10th house, they think, oh, yeah, yeah, we just have to see 10th Lord. We just have to see the sun. We have to see Saturn, of course, because Saturn is the uh, most important planet for the Dasamsa chart, right? He's like the Naisargic Atmakaraka for the Dasamsa chart. So, and therefore, uh, Saturn becomes important, but equally or much more important then all these planets is actually Mercury. Why? Because Mercury is the Karaka for skill. And uh, if we do not have skill, then what do we uh, give to the world? So if there is no skill, then there's no value that we can inherently add to somebody. So uh, if, if, if Mercury is not well placed in the chart, then it can mean that uh, the person is either lacking skills or the person is not interested to become skillful. And uh, one of the best ways to improve your Mercury is to learn about the things that uh, you feel uh, you are not very good at and the things which you need to know in your profession. And uh, it's, it's as simple as that because Mercury is the student. It's like, what does a student do? The student learns, right? So, when we talk of astrology, it's very simple sometimes. Uh, it can get very complex, but certain principles are very easy. Uh, like Mercury is badly placed, then learn, like uh, practice. A student uh, does this, you know, practice. Like we have the example of Arjuna. He's known as Gurakesh because uh, the Mahabharat says that he would, uh, he would, when everybody would sleep, you know, he would practice archery. In the night, dead of the night, can you believe it? And he had extraordinary powers, of course, because of his sense con sense controlled nature, his you know submissiveness to his guru. So now Arjuna exemplifies the uh, perfect student, and therefore we should be uh, obedient. We now obedient to whom? Maybe to a teacher who is online, offline, whoever, or a mentor. But we should also be obedient to uh, the path which means we should be surrendered committed and we should be loyal to that path not just you know keep changing it uh, as per the whims of the mind and the senses because the mind is like as uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam says the mind is like a, it's like manorathe nasati dhavato bahi it's like a chariot sometimes which takes you from one place to the other and leads you nowhere most likely so the more we are having fluctuations, mood swings, the more we are letting emotions uh, take up our space uh, of the mind, of the head actually, uh, the more our intelligence is weakened and the more we make bad decisions in life. So Mercury is also the ability to make good decisions in life by uh, weighing the different pros and cons in life. Uh, Mercury also shows our ability to navigate through problems in life, you know, somehow finding ways and uh, it's like uh, getting things done somehow. And of course, if Mercury is badly placed, then it doesn't mean that the person is incompetent. It can mean that the person is incompetent to get things done in the right way. That also could be a meaning. So you, you might see 
a fraud or a criminal with a very exalted mercury. So now you may be thinking, oh, wow, this person has an exalted mercury mm, uh, or, you know, a debilitated mercury. So you have to see what mercury is doing in the chart. So you can't just say, oh, he's exalted, so he will be good. Now he'll be good. A criminal might have an exalted mercury, but uh, he may be very good at using it for his profession. But uh, is that noble? Well, necessarily not. Most likely not. So we have to see. So if Mercury is uh, very powerful but under affliction, then the person can also use Mercury for wrong reasons. And similarly, as I said, if he's in, in, a, in a bad, in a weak position, even then this can happen. If he's in debility, then also the person can be very sharp, uh, but for the wrong reasons, you know. So the morality is not there sometimes. And of course, uh, then the next planet that we need to check is uh, the planet Sun. Sun is the significator of authority, uh, commandership, uh, administration, power, position. Uh, sun is the natural leader uh, in the zodiac. So therefore, if we have a problem with Sun, then what happens is we are very skillful uh, and we are very competent. We are very knowledgeable. But the problem is we cannot administer other people. We cannot uh, delegate resources to other people. We cannot be a good leader or a good administrator. We cannot uh, control people. We cannot uh, make people do things which they should. It's either because the subordinates may feel you are not good enough, you do not have a vision or you are not knowledgeable enough or there could be a number of reasons, But or maybe you can lack assertiveness sometimes. <clears throat> So, therefore, if uh, sun is not uh, well placed in the horoscope, then it can happen that your subordinates may bypass you and uh, send some mail to your seniors, you know, like assuming that you don't exist sometimes. Or your uh, juniors can like uh, not listen to what you said, you know, or they may do tricks around to somehow uh, get through their way. And also, uh, if sun is badly placed, then it's very well seen, you know, that people sometimes do not take you seriously. Or they may take you seriously depending on uh, their benefits. If, if it benefits them, then they will take you seriously. If it doesn't, then they will not. So uh, now, if sun is not well placed in your chart, what can you do? What is the remedy? Well, a very simple remedy is to... Uh, is to do what you said and to say what you did. Okay, so it's uh, accountability is very important. So if you, if you, if you say okay, uh, I will go tomorrow at five p.m. somewhere, then you got to go at five. It should not be six or it should not be even before. It should be exactly at five. So that's how you cultivate assertiveness. You say something and you do it. And if you did something. You just say it. Yes, uh, yesterday I did this. That's all. Now, whether it's good or bad, that that's a topic of some other day. But uh, because Surya is represented by Lord Ram, and we know, right, uh, in case of Lord Ram, it is said, uh, word which comes out from his mouth or an arrow which comes out from his, that quiver can never return. Okay. So it's like... Whenever you say something with 100% sincerity, you implement it and always speak the truth because the sun is light. So when, whenever you see there is light, it means you are aware of the reality and everybody else is aware of the same reality that you are aware of. Everybody is aware of the circumstances. So it's like complete honesty and transparency and accountability. So these are the things by which if you do, you can strengthen the sun and uh, and uh, you can also do Surya Namaskar to strengthen the sun. You can do fasting on Sundays. You can do give donations on Sundays. And then if there are difficulties uh, related to your sun, then those that karma can be reduced somehow, you know, especially by doing fasting and by doing donations. So, and of course, you can read the Ramayana, you can um, see what is going on in the Ramayana, how did Lord Ram behave as an ideal personality. That's why he's known as Mariyada Purushottam, and that is why he's the significator of the sun, right? So, 
Uh, therefore, it's very important that you try to exemplify the principles of the Ramayana and try to um, inculcate some of the behaviors of Lord, Lord Sri Ramachandra in your life. Then you will see that your Surya is naturally improving uh, traits related to your son are gradually becoming more and more powerful. You know, people will respect you more. People will come and request help from you. It's like you are the king, basically. Okay. Otherwise, you will be discarded, dejected, and you will be unhappy. Okay. And then, of course, we have Saturn. Saturn is the Karaka for hard work. So, uh, it's like you do something uh, without expecting much in return. You know, Saturn is that typical karma yogi who says, okay, I'll do my best, but even if I don't get the results, I'm still fine with it. I will work to get good results. But I'm not attached to it. Even if I don't get, then uh, it's fine. So that's what Saturn is. Saturn uh, is a very important planet because he tells us that we have to grind in this material world because the Bhagavad Gita says, Manasasthani Indriyani Prakriti Sthani Karshati. The living entity is uh, working very hard to <laughs> sustain himself in this material world. So therefore, Saturn shows that uh, so the placement of Saturn in the horoscope can show to what extent are we ready to pay the price to get something. And then finally, we have Jupiter, which also is sometimes considered as the Garga for the 10th house. Some astrologers take it, some don't. But what does Jupiter represent? Jupiter represents goodwill, noble thinking. Uh, it shows positivity, optimism. It shows the desire to help others. So imagine you are very smart, you are a very good leader and you can work very hard, but you have ill intentions. Then will anybody come to you? Absolutely not, right? So we need these four planets. So if you have good intentions, then you have leadership skills, you have uh, competent competency, which means you are fully aware of the work around and you are ready to slog and <laughs> give your blood, sweat and toil and then uh, when you have all these four then success is a byproduct because if you see people they might get certain good things in life but if they are seriously lacking in one of these four like you know they are not skillful but somehow they get good jobs you know promotion then you will see eventually they will realize you know they are hollow inside or if they are, if they cannot handle people, then they may not be able to go into a managerial role. You know, they they uh, or if they can't work hard, you know, then they may feel, oh, life is too much for them. You know, maybe I should have another job which pays me less money or whatever, but uh, gives me less worry, which is also fine. Uh, it doesn't mean that you should work eighteen hours a day, but definitely when we are in the job, at least eight to nine hours, we should work properly. So. And then you have to see your dashas, what kind of dashas uh, are actually coming. So if there is a dasha of one of these planets and uh, if, if you see that that planet is well placed, then there will be rise in the profession. And if you see that that planet is not well placed, then due to the problems related to that planet, as we discussed for every planet, there can be downfall. Okay. So it's very important that we analyze the overall chart and then we see the dashas. And we under, we try to understand. So, for example, uh, if you have a Sun-Venus conjunction. Now, Venus has not much role in the profession, but because Venus is conjunct the Sun, so it can happen that during Venus Dasha, you might need some leadership capabilities, but because of, you know, luxury and allurements, you may not pay heed to those qualities. You, you may be responsible. So... If Sun, Venus are conjunct, then you have to make sure that because of luxuries and over drinking and all these things, you know, and opposite sex, you do not give in to, uh, you do not do things which are not to be done by authority positions, uh, by people in authority positions or by leaders or by administrators. You know, so, and of course, if you have, you know, for example, you have Moon and Saturn, for example, you know, so then do you get too much depressed or whatever, you know, if there is workload. So you've got to do some meditation and you, you have to uh, have this positive bent of mind somehow, which is very difficult, easier said than done for a Moon-Saturn conjunction. 
Now, if Rahu is there with Sun, you know, there can be too many doubts or over uh, overestimation of one's uh, capabilities and underestimation of one's weaknesses. And if Ketu is there, you know, Ketu Mercury, then you have too many skills, but you don't know where, which way to work, right? So, so if they are well placed, then it can help you. But if they are not, then that can uh, trouble you. So either your Mahadasha, Antardasha will be of one of these four planets or will be of the other five planets, which will be either aspected by one of these four planets or conjunct one of these four planets. Or some of these planets will be either in, in these uh, signs lauded by these four planets. So suppose you have Rahu Mahadasha and uh, you have uh, Rahu Mahadasha, Moon Antardasha is going on. So it's not these four planets, but suppose Rahu is maybe in Leo or uh, he is in Virgo or Gemini or Capricorn or Aquarius. So these four planets rule these signs so then the qualities of the, uh, that will be required will be Saturnian okay so somehow you will see even if it is the other five planets they will be somehow related to these four planets you know or uh, they may be in Parivartan Yoga or in some kind of Raj Yoga Mahapurush Yoga whatever you know that depends on the chart but if we take care of all these four aspects in the profession, then we will have success and we will gain wealth because the 10th house is the significator of wealth also. It's the most powerful Artha house. And then uh, success will be ours. All right. So look at your chart, see where the problem is or rather close your eyes. Don't look at your chart and ask yourself, why do you think you are not progressing in your career? What do you think that is that you are lacking? <laughs> And if you feel I am doing everything, I have all these four traits in the best of my capacity. And then even then there's no growth, then maybe it's time for you to change change your job, look for another job or another domain or another stream. Maybe as per your destiny, something is not working out. All right. So in that case, let's be humble enough to admit that. But before that situation comes, we need to make sure that all these four pillars are well intact. Okay. That will be all from my side, ladies and gentlemen. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him irrespective of which career you are belonging to. And if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below and please click the thumbs up if you like this video and share it with your colleagues and family members and friends. And if you want a consultation for me, my website is down below in the description section. Thank you very much.